It's no secret that I'm enamored with vacuum tube computers. I mean, I'm literally trying to build one on this channel. But I'm also completely fascinated by mini computers. And, well, you've all seen the thumbnail. That's why you clicked. You know where this is going. I bought a mini computer. <laughs> now, before we go too far, let's talk about the term mini computer. Uh, originally, once upon a time, when vacuum tube computers were the only computers, they were just called computers. Uh, and then the transistor led way to transistorized computers, and then that led way to the integrated circuit, which allowed computers to become much, much smaller. And these much smaller computers, compared to vacuum tube computers before them, were called mini computers. But I mean, as you can see, they're still very, very large. And then as integrated circuit technology pro progressed, we got to things like the Z80 and the 8086, which were essentially an entire computer on a single chip. Uh, and that led way to what's called the microcomputer. And uh, nowadays, uh, all the computers are micro, so we just call them computers again. So whenever I say I bought a mini computer and somebody sees a picture of what it is exactly that I bought, they always go, that's not mini. And <laughs> they're right. It's not mini. It's, it's very, very large. Uh, but that's the term that was used for it. And so anyways, I've been keeping an eye out for a mini computer for a while now. I really wanted one of these. And out of nowhere on Facebook Marketplace, a random ad showed up. And looking at the pictures, I went, this is it. This is, this is a mini computer. And I've been hunting for one of these. And the price was uh, so low, I couldn't say no. But the computer itself was something I'd never heard of. The ad just listed it as a Centurion computer. And with a little bit of Googling, it seems that Centurion Computers is a small business computer company that was based out of San Antonio. Now I say was based, they might still be based out of San Antonio. I did some hunting around on uh, Google Earth, Google Maps, and I could actually find their building, but uh, I've reached out to them and I haven't gotten any replies back. And honestly, their website looks like it's from about 15 years ago, so I don't really know if they're still in business or not. But anyways, I was very interested in this machine, so I sent the seller a message and we got to talking and we set up a date and it was uh, quite far away. It was a six hour drive one way. And when we got there, the building it was in was quite interesting because half of the roof was missing. So the computer wasn't stored in the best of conditions. Also, upon seeing it in person, it was about twice as big as I was imagining. It was massive. It was so much bigger than I had originally thought by looking at the ad. But there was four of us and we had a ramp truck and we uh, sweated a lot, but we got it all just barely stuffed into the pickup truck. And then we had another six hour drive home and uh, we went to bed absolutely exhausted. And then the next morning we woke up and it was time to unload. Uh, but this time we didn't have four people. We just had two people and we didn't have a ramp truck or any ramps of any kind. So... Hmm, how are we gonna get it out there? Well, it just so happens that we have diesel power on our side. So out came the front end loader and it was time to pull this mini computer out of the back of our truck. here it is all unloaded <laughs> and it's it's a little ridiculous it's a lot ridiculous it's huge uh, for something that weighs so incredibly much and it was extremely heavy uh, but for something that is so big and weighs so much it doesn't even have one one thousandth of the processing power as the supercomputer that I carry around in my pocket otherwise known as the smartphone. So it's a little ridiculous to think how far we've come. 
Now there's a whole lot of stuff here and it looks far more complicated than I think it actually is because what really kind of blew my mind once I started looking at this in more detail is that about 70% of the size and heft is made up of just data storage. The computer itself is quite small and that's just these, these cards here on the bottom of this left cabinet. So there's a ton of stuff here to look at, and I want to give you guys just a quick rundown of everything that we managed to get. But before we get there, there's a massive problem, and that's that the inside of all of these machines was coated with this sound deadening foam that just kind of turned to disgusting dust over the years. I mean, this stuff is gross. Uh, so I think before we do anything, the first step is going to be uh, vacuuming as much of this stuff up so we don't get completely disgusting while looking at it. So I'm gonna pull the vacuum out and let's give this thing a quick clean. All right, so obviously uh, everything's gonna need a very deep clean, uh, but for now I'm not afraid to move around and touch pieces without feeling like I need to wear a hazmat suit. So it's, it's a little better. Uh, so to give a quick outline of just what all we have sitting here, uh, right behind me we have the printer, and then right next to me here is a cabinet that has just one drive in it. Uh, and then the second cabinet over here is the primary cabinet. It's got the computer and another drive in it. Um, and then we have three data terminals, a bunch of disks and media behind them. And then the last major piece that we have is that little box right in the center, and that is a modem. So that's all of the pieces. Uh, so let's zoom in on each one and just take a real quick look at them. And so that way we kind of know what we're up against and how big of a mountain it is that we have to climb. All right, so this is the printer and <laughs> it's huge. It's the biggest, heaviest printer I've, I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but just by looking at the outside, there's a lot of really interesting things going on. Um, and so the first thing is, is that you, you can see that we have a, a spool, like a typewriter ribbon on each side here. Um, and so it, it actually kind of works like a typewriter. And if we lift this up and pull this back, uh, this does two things. One, that's how you load the paper. Uh, 
<laughs> and you can see the paper has most definitely seen better days. Uh, and then we can kind of get a view at the motor in here. So we can see the ribbon running along here. And then we can see all of the type elements along here. So this motor on the end here spins it to the correct type element location. And then a hammer behind that hammers that into the paper. It's a wild way to do printing, uh, and it'll be really exciting to see this thing chattering along. I'm curious how fast it can actually print. And then along the backside here, there's not a whole lot we can see without taking it apart, but there are a couple windows in here on the top, and I can see uh, one, two, three, four, five circuit boards spanning across this. So there's quite a lot of circuitry going on inside of this thing. So it's gonna be really interesting to pull this apart and take a look at it. But uh, the printer is pretty far down the list of things to address because uh, a printer is useless without a computer. So we gotta get the computer going first. All right, so this first cabinet here just has one drive in it. Uh, and I've actually taken the screw out so I can slide, <laughs> so I can slide the whole drive rack out. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of massive, but I can also slide this cover back because it, it wasn't bolted down for whatever reason. And we can kind of get a look at the drive on the inside. Uh, now, now I think before you ship these, you're supposed to put them into a, a, a travel mode that kind of locks everything in place. And that... I don't think was done. So uh, these drives may require a whole lot of work. There we go. The only other thing in this cabinet is on the bottom, there's a pretty hefty fan setup. There's these two massive fan motors and a giant box, and it either draws air in and exhausts it out the bottom or draws air in from the bottom and pushes it up this way. I'm not sure which way it goes, but that's kind of an overkill solution for cooling in this thing. So I don't know, maybe this drive ran hot. Uh, and I might run into some cooling problems if I put this drive into this chassis, but uh, that's a problem for the future because I certainly don't want two chassis, one of which is just for drives. And this is the second chassis, and this is the chassis that actually has the computer in it. And uh, we can see the computer on the bottom here, and it's just a backplane with a bunch of different cards slotted into it. So I tell you what, we'll go ahead and, and slide one of these cards out just to uh, get a look at how big they are. <laughs> look at that, that's a memory card. Uh, so <laughs> So there's a lot of tiny little ICs on this thing. And when we get to actually trying to get this computer booted up, what we'll do is we'll take each card out and just inspect it and take a look at how each card functions and what exactly it does. Because there's a lot of really interesting ICs on not just the memory card, but all of these cards. So we're going to kind of do deep dives into each and every one of these cards when it gets to be that time. But that's pretty much the entire computer itself. Uh, and you can see that the individual components of the computer are set up on the card. So we have CPU, disk, disk, AUT, whatever that means, multiplexer, multiplexer, uh, CMD, I think. And then we have two memory cards and a printer card. And there's a bunch of expansion slots to expand it out further, but I wouldn't even know where to find uh, additional cards for this thing, because I don't know anything about it. Now, just above that is the other drive. This drive has a little locking latch here that allows you to pull it out. And then when you pull it out, that's when you can access the top of it. And this is where you put the media in. And I actually have a spare media disc over here. So this is what one of the media discs looks like. Uh, and you you just open it up like that, and that pulls it out. Uh, and you can see the disc in there. And, we'll, and then you just line it up and drop it in. So I believe it goes like that. Then you latch it down. You slide that thing back in place. And there you have your new media freshly installed. <laughs> Um, so earlier when I said that uh, like 70% of all of this heft and weight, it's purely for the, the storage data. The computer itself is tiny. Everything else is for, for storage. So that's, that's really wild for me. That's really hard for me to wrap my head around. <laughs> 
And then finally at the top, and this is probably one of my favorite things about this, we have a bunch of LEDs for giving us the data on the address and other stuff. I'm not even sure what, um, but this will be really cool. So we, we get a functioning computer with a data terminal and a blinking lights machine. So it's just kind of an all in one, which is really neat. And then down here in front, we've got two pretty interesting devices. This one on the right here, I think, is the actual modem that goes to the phone line. Uh, I think you bring the phone line in here. There's some terminals in here that you then hook up to these terminals on the back. And then this is just a card that slots in and slides in and has Western Electric written on it. Uh, so I think that might be a way to hook this up to the phone line, I, I, I'm not entirely sure. There's a lot of question marks floating around this. Now this one here is called a Micom Micro 8000 modem, uh, but it's a whole lot more than just a modem, I feel like, because if we crack it open, which we can do here pretty easily, uh, we can see it is phenomenally complicated on the inside. <laughs> There are five circuit boards inside of this thing and they're set up in layers. And even the circuit board on the top here has this insane ceramic microprocessor in it and some PROMs. And uh, if we look at the back, the connections for it are a little ridiculous. I have no idea what's going on with this thing. <laughs> Uh, so that's going to require some uh, research as well, but that'll also be a project for the far future. <laughs> All right, and then finally here at the end, we've got the three data terminals. And I have no idea why I received three of these. I'm pretty sure I only really need one data terminal, um, but it's, it's cool that I have three because that means I've got spare parts uh, in case it doesn't work. And looking at the monitors of these, they've, they've actually got quite a bit of screen burn-in, but I'm hoping that once they power up, uh, the, the burn-in won't be quiet as noticeable. Now, all three of these data terminals are made by a company called ADDS, which I believe was a fairly common manufacturer of data terminals uh, way back in the day. But finding an ADDS terminal with this very interesting blue and beige color scheme is pretty rare because I, I believe that these were made specifically for Centurion computers. Although I imagine that the terminal itself is just kind of a generic model that was uh, essentially painted for Centurion. Now I have no idea what the actual internal condition of these looks like. I, I haven't even tried to crack them open yet, oh, but I'm feeling a little bit adventurous today. So I'm thinking we might try putting power into one of these and seeing if it powers up. All right, so it's plugged in. Oh, I heard a beep. No high voltage though. Oh, <laughs> oh, I don't know if you saw that. There was, a, there was a little beam that showed up there. Let's try that again. And then if I shut it off, oh, oh my gosh. Look, <laughs> holy cow. Let's see if I can zoom in on this enough. All right, look at that, it's working up. Holy cow, we have, we have a flashing cursor and we've got something on the bottom here. Uh, it looks all sorts of broken, it says pass, and then has a bunch of strange numbers, and then says send. Uh, let's, let's try typing something. Who knows what's going to happen? Oh, nope, I'm getting nothing out of the keyboard, but I, oh, well, that disappeared down there. Uh, but I, I don't know if that's because the keyboard's bad or because I don't have anything plugged into it, but uh, <laughs> that's unbelievable. I can't believe it. Our data terminal turned on. <laughs> I mean, this thing's been sitting outside for who knows how long, and just like that, boom, we had life out of it. I didn't even have to crack it open. Oh, that is so cool. That is so super cool. Uh, well, that is such a fantastic, phenomenal note for this to end on. I am just completely excited. I did not expect that to happen. Uh, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. So that is my new computer. This is going to be a new series in which we try to bring this thing back to life one piece at a time. And we take a look at how it's actually constructed. So I am really excited about this. So thank you guys so much for watching. And this is gonna be a fun one. So hopefully I'll see y'all in the next episode.